please stand. Please kneel. Please stand. Let us pray. Remember your mercies, O Lord and with your eternal protection sanctify your servants, for whom Christ, your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man so shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see, and those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? 
He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. While we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes, we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. <clears throat> Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers. Though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty. Because he surrendered himself to death, and was counted among the wicked. He shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. I am a 
an object of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors, and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. But my trust is in you. my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant, save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. Father, A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Please remain seated during the chanting of the Passion we will kneel briefly at the death of Jesus.
disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers, together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with the lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, do you seek I have 
justify him. I find no case against him. We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you? and power to crucify you. You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, But the people cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at the place called the Stone Pavement, or in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to them, Here is your king. They cried out,
Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. crucified man broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the They did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. These things occurred so that scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, They will look on the one who Jesus 
and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no It was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby. They laid Jesus To preach uh, this evening is one of the most difficult things, I think, for anyone to do. The solemn night, this holy night, just having heard the story of the Passion, the extraordinary facts of that last day of Jesus' life, which we're all familiar with. And our tendency, I think, is to theologize it, to make it somehow out there. And then we try to strive to be like Jesus, to see in others the suffering that he did. And then we try to immerse ourselves in that relationship in that moment. But when we do that, I think we've really lost what is the most important thing for us to settle into this day, this entire day, for many of us, we were here at noon for three hours. Many of us are back now, a day dedicated to remembering. And that, of all things, is what we are invited to do this day of all days for all Christians around the world, to immerse ourselves in this day, in every aspect of this day, and the day is noted by suffering and sorrow and pain. Not simply of Jesus, important that it is, but our pain. We don't want to displace, however, the relationship that we have with Jesus because our pain, we are invited to recognize it as his. Isn't that what happens when you lose a dear friend or someone beloved by you, a relative, a parent, a spouse? The heartache, the wrenching heartache, every fiber of your body is filled with this sadness, this desire, if only that were me, suffering rather than the one I love. You see, in point of fact, that's what we are invited to do this day. Not to fall back, I believe, on the crutch of theology, recognizing that Jesus' death had a purpose, that he took on all of our sinfulness in order to bring us to life, to become alive to the love of God, to become alive in this world, and it was taken away taken away by the darkness of sin, or as we heard from one of our speakers this afternoon, hatred. Hatred appeared to be victorious in the death of Jesus Christ. But we know otherwise. Another speaker spoke of the throne of the cross, the glory that came of it. And again, we're going out there 
and to these realms of making us feel at peace, not really understanding and living and immersing ourselves in the tragedy of the death of Jesus Christ. That's what we need to focus on this day, in this moment, now. Jesus. He had his beloved disciple. We hear that in the story, entrusting his mother to him. But we need to acknowledge the fact that the beloved in our lives, each of our lives, must be and is Jesus Christ. When we are present to that, we will know what it is to observe this day. We need to reflect on the personal relationship that we have developed throughout our lives, not simply our lives of our faith, but our lives. We've lost a friend. And that must mean something to us. Have its effect in the way in which we live this day, this day. But we're not meant simply to stay in this day. We're meant to anticipate the joy of Easter, yes, but let's not rush there. We have to go through this day. We have to shed tears, not figuratively, by the way, but literally. Jesus Christ, someone who's important to us and needs to be important to us, was wrenched from our lives unjustly, the victim of hatred that has to affect us recognizing hatred in the world and what it means when it demeans life itself, a precious life of our friend. We've lost someone, not a figure in history, not someone whom we believe is the Son of God. We've lost someone a part of us dies every Good Friday. For each of us, it's something different, but we need to identify what it is. And in mourning that loss, there must be tears, real tears. That's when we will know Jesus Christ means something to me. all these years still my best friend and he's lost to me today i lived for a while in central america and many of you may have had an experience there and in other places usually where there's a latin or an african culture do you know that good friday is the one day in all the year that has the most people going to services, to Mass. Good Friday, not Christmas, not Easter. This day, I always thought it curious. And then I thought of it, and the quick way of understanding it, of it is that these people recognize their suffering. Their suffering is now identified with Jesus' suffering. But I think that's a quick and facile way to understand it. Rather, I think these people are so in touch with how important Jesus Christ is in their lives that carries them through every day of their struggle. They've lost that. They've lost him. They mourn what he suffered. They struggle with what he suffered not with what they're struggling with. We need to capture that, that spirit. We've lost a friend today, our best friend. We can't stand silent. Important though it is to be in this church today, it's not enough.
we must be present to darkness in the world and recognize this goes into theology where there is suffering because of injustice and hatred and discrimination and bigotry. All the things that brought Jesus to his death must come to an end by our joining in the struggle. In that way, our relationship with Jesus Christ does matter. We suffer the pain of his loss, yes, but through his struggle, through this death, we can anticipate Easter. We can anticipate the fact that struggle, it is part of human nature, sadly, but we cannot stand by as a friend of Jesus and allow it to continue. Allow it to darken a world that was only intended to live in the brilliant light of God's love. Each shadow of darkness must bring a tear to our eyes. It's an indication of pain in the world, of struggle, yes, sinfulness. But Jesus took that. We bear with him that struggle. So this day, this Good Friday, where good will always triumph over evil, we need to immerse ourselves I'm repeating myself because I believe it is so important. We must immerse ourselves in what our relationship with Jesus Christ means every moment of our lives. And on this day where we have lost him, in a way, we must recognize and acknowledge that pain, that deepness of its sorrowfulness, and then go out into our world to make sure it never, ever, ever happens to anyone else. It's wonderful to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. We live with the victory of his cross, not in its shadow, but as the light that's showing us the way and the best way to get to Jesus Christ, the best way, is by reaching out to one another, especially in times of loss and sorrow and struggle. This Good Friday, we've lost a friend. This Good Friday, we learned how much that friendship means to us. Let us stand. <clears throat> Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that, leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Let us kneel. Almighty ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, 
Watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout all the world may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray also for our most holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Holy Church to govern the holy people of God. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you, their Maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray also for our Bishop Timothy, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed. Hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully. Through Christ our Lord. Let us stand. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins, through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever living God, who make your church ever fruitful with a new offspring. Increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens that, reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Let us stand. Let us pray also for our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. 
Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first that he may grant them to an advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, Graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, Grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth and that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God that following what is right with sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest. Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and witness of the good works done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you, the one God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Let us pray also for those in public office 
that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, Look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure. Through Christ our Lord, Let us stand. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loose and fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We will now take a collection for the Holy Land. Violence and instability continue to plague the Middle East. The shrinking Christian community there struggles to remain in the land of Christ's birth, death, and resurrection. Please help support our brothers and sisters in the Holy Land by giving to today's special Good Friday collection. This collection allows the Franciscans and others to continue caring for Christianity's holiest sites and for God's people in the Holy Land. Please be generous in your support.
Please stand. <laughs> Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us Please be seated. We now invite those present to venerate the cross. Please come forward following the directions of the hospitality ministers Come forward in two lines and venerate the cross two by two. An appropriate gesture is a bow, a genuflection, or a gentle touch. Please refrain from kissing the cross.
done for you. I planted you as my fairest vine, but you yielded only bitterness. When I was thirsty, you gave me vinegar to drink, and you pierced my side with a lance. My
please kneel. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please exit the church in silence to preserve a spirit of quiet reverence for this holy night. <laughs> 